We're here with Steve Mullaney, the president and CEO of Aviatrix. Steve, John and I started this whole super cloud narrative as a way to describe that something different is happening specifically within the AWS ecosystem, but more broadly across the cloud landscape. At reInvent last year, you and I spoke on theCUBE and you said one of your investors, a guy named Nick Sturiel, said to you at the show, it's happening. Steve, welcome yeah. to theCUBE. What's happening? What did Nick mean by that? Yeah, we were, get, we were just getting ready to go on and I leaned over and he looked at me and he whispered in my ear and said, it's happening. And he said it just like that. And, and you're right, it was, it was kind of funny and we talked about that. And what he means is enterprises, you know, this is why I went to Aviatrix three and a half years ago is the, 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 the flip switch for enterprises. And they said, now we mean it. We've been talking about cloud for 12 years or 15 years. Now we mean it. We are digitally transforming. We are the movement to cloud is going to make that happen. And oh, by the way, of course it's multi-cloud because enterprises put workloads where they run best, where they have the best security, the best performance, the best cost. And the business is driving this transformation and they decide that I'm going to use Azure. And another business unit decides I'm using Google and another one says I'm using AWS. And so of course it's going to be multi-cloud. And I think we're going to start seeing actual multi-cloud applications, once that infrastructure, and you know, you call it the super cloud, once that starts getting built, developers are going to go, wait a minute, so I can pick this feature from Google and, and that service from Azure and that service from AWS easily without any hesitation. Once that happens, they're going to start really developing. Today, there aren't multi-cloud applications, but, but, but the, what's happening is the enterprise embracing public cloud, they're using multiple clouds, many of them call it four plus one, right? They're four different public clouds plus what they have on-prem. That to me is what's happening. I am now re-architecting my enterprise infrastructure from applications all the way down to the network, and I am embracing uh, uh, public clouds in that in that process. So, I mean, you nailed it, so many things in there. I mean, digitally transforming, to me, this is the digital transformation. It's a leveraging, embracing the CapEx from the hyperscalers. Now, you know, people in the industry, we're not trying to do what Gartner does and create a new category per se, but we do use super cloud as a metaphor. So I don't expect necessarily vendors to use it or not, but, but I, and I get that. But when you talk about multi-cloud, what specifically is new? In other words, what you touched on some of this stuff, what constitutes a modern multi-cloud or what we would call a super cloud you know, network architecture? What are the salient attributes? Yeah, I, I, I would say today, so two years ago, there was no such thing even as multiple clouds. It was AWS, let's be clear. Everything was AWS. And for people to even back then, two, three years ago, to even envision that there would be anything else other than AWS, people couldn't even envision. Now people kind of go, yeah, that was dumb. We now see that we're going to use multiple clouds. We're going to use Azure, we're going to use GCP, and we're going to use this, and we guess we're going to use Oracle and even Ali Cloud. We're going to use five or four or five different public clouds. What's, but that would be, I think of as multiple clouds, but from an IT perspective, they need to be able to support all those clouds in these shared services and what they're going to do. I actually think we're starting, and, and you may have hit on something, in the super cloud, or I know you've, you've talked about meta cloud, that that's got bad connotations for yeah, <laughs> Facebook. Right. And nobody, but it's like, yeah. no, please not another meta thing. <laughs> but there is that concept of this abstracted layer above, you know, riding, we call it, you know, altitude, you know, aviatrix, everything, you know, riding above the clouds, right? That, that, that common abstracted layer, this application infrastructure that runs the application that rides above all the different public clouds. And I think once we do that, you know, Dave, what's going to happen is, I think really what's going to happen is you're going to start seeing these, these multi-cloud applications, which to my knowledge really doesn't exist today. I, I think that might be the next phase. And in order for that to happen, you have to have all of the infrastructure be multi-cloud, meaning not just networking and network security from from, from Aviatrix, but you need Snowflake, you need HashiCorp, you need Datadog, you need all the new horsemen of the new multi-cloud, which isn't the old guys, right? This is the all new people, Aviatrix, Hashi, Snowflake, Datadog, you name it, that are going to be able to deliver all this multi-cloud, cross-cloud, wherever you want to talk about it, such that application development and deployment can happen seamlessly and frictionlessly 
across multi-cloud. Once that happens, the entire stack, then you're going to start seeing, and that to me starts enabling this, what you guys call, you know, the super cloud, the meta cloud, the whatever cloud, but that then rides above all the individual clouds. That That's going to start getting a whole new realm of application development in my mind. So we got some work to do to basic do some basic blocking and tackling, then the application developers can really build on top of that. So, yep. so some of the skeptics on, on this topic would ask, well, how do you envision this changing networking versus it just being a bolt on to existing fossilized network infrastructure? In other words, yeah. how do we get from point A where we are today to point B, you know, so-called networking yeah. nirvana, so we can actually build those uh, super so, cloud applications? Yeah, so you know what it is? It's interesting because it goes back to my background at Nasira and what we used to talk about then. It, it isn't about managing complexity, it's about creating simplicity. It's very different. And when you put the intelligence into the software, right? This is what computer science is all about. We're turning networking into computer science. When you create an abstraction layer, we are not just an overlay day. We, add, David, we actually integrate in with the native services of the cloud. We are not managing the complexity of these multi-clouds. We are using it, you know, controlling the native constructs, adding our own intelligence to this, and then creating what is basically simplification for the people above it. So we're simplifying things, not just managing the complexity. That's how you get the agility for cloud. That's how you get to be able to do this because if all you are is a veneer on top of complexity, you're just hiding complexity. You're not creating simplicity. And what happens is it actually probably gets more complex because if all you're doing is hiding the bad stuff, you're not getting rid of it. I love that. That's I love and at that the layer, Steve. we're doing that at the networking and network security layer. You're going to see Snowflake and Datadog and other people do it at their layers. I, I, you know, it reminds me of a conversation I had with Kaz, the one of the founders of Pure Storage, who they're all about simplicity. This idea of of creating simplicity versus, like you said, just creating you know a way to handle the complexity. I compare you know Pure Storage with the sort of old legacy EMC storage devices, and that's what you had. You had you you had EMC managing the complexity, you had pure storage disrupting by creating simplicity. So what are the challenges of creating that simplicity and delivering that seamless experience, that continuous experience across cloud? Is it engineering? Is it mindset? Is it culture? Is it technology? What is it? Well, I mean, look at look, you, you see the recession that we're we're hitting. You see there is a significant problem that we have in the general IT industry right now, and it's called skills gap, skills shortage. It's two problems. We don't have enough people, and we don't have enough people that know cloud. And the reason is everybody on the same Tuesday, three and a half years ago, all said, now I mean I'm moving to cloud. We are a technology company. We don't make sneakers anymore. We don't make beer. We're a technology company, and we are going to digitally transform, and we're going to move to cloud. Guess what? Three years ago, there were probably seven people that understood cloud. Now everyone on the same Tuesday morning all decides to try to hire those same seven people. There's just not enough people around. So you're going to need software and you're going to have to put the intelligence into the software because you're not going to be able to A, hire those people and B, even if you hired them, you can't keep them. As soon as they learn cloud, guess what happens, Dave? They're off, they're on to the next yeah. job at the next highest bidder. So how are you going to handle that? You have to have software, that, that intelligent software that is going to simplify things for you. We have people managing massive multi-cloud network and network security people with two people. On-prem, they got hundreds, right? You, It's not about taking that complex model that I had on-prem and jam it into the cloud. You don't have the people to do it. And you're not going to get the people to do it. You know, I, I want to so ask it's a, you. It's a, yeah. So I want to ask you about the go-to-market challenges because it, it, we, our industry gets a bad rap for, for selling. We're really good at selling and then, but, but actually delivering what we sell, sometimes we, we fall down there. So, so I, I love Tom Sweet, the CFO of, of Dell. He talks about the, the say-do ratio, uh, how that's actually got to be low, but you know, but you know what I mean? Uh, the math, yeah. the fraction guy, right? So, but do, do what you say you're going to do. Are there specific go-to-market challenges related to this type of cross-cloud selling where you can set, you have to set the customer's expectations because what you're describing is not going to happen overnight, it's a journey. Uh, but how do you handle that go-to-market challenge in terms of setting those customer expectations and actually delivering 
what you say you can sell and selling enough to actually have a successful business? Um, so I think everything's outside in. So, so I think the, 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 what really is exciting to me about this cloud computing model that we, the transformation that we're going through is it is business led and it is led by the CEO and it is led by the business units. They run the business. It is all about agility. It's about enabling my developers and it's all about driving the business, market share, revenue, all these kinds of things. You know, the last transformation of mainframe to on to PC client server was led by the technologists. It wasn't led by the business. And it was, it was really hard to tie that to the business. So it end, so this is great because we can look at the initiatives. You can look at the, 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 the initiatives of the CEO in your company. And now as an IT person, you can tie to that. And they're going to have two or three or four initiatives and you can actually map it to that. So that's where we start is let's look at what the C your CEO cares about. He cares about this. He cares about that. He cares about driving revenue. He cares about agility of getting new applications out to the market sooner to get more revenue. There's this, and oh, by the way, transforming your infrastructure to the cloud is the number one thing. So it's all about agility. So guess what? You need to be able to respond to that immediately because tomorrow the business is going to go to you and say, great news, Dave, we're moving to GCP. Wait, wait what? No one told me about that. Well, we're telling you now, and uh, you need to be ready tomorrow. And if you're sitting there and you're tied to the low level constructs and all you know is AWS, well, I don't have those people. And even if I, ha even if I could hire them, I'm not allowed to, because I can't hire anybody. How am I going to respond to the business and the needs of the business? Now, all of a sudden I'm in the way as an infrastructure team of the CEO's goals because we decided we need to we need to get the AI capabilities of GCP and we're moving to GCP. Or I just did a big deal with GCP and uh, miraculously they said I need to run on GCP, right? I did a big deal with Google, right? Guess what comes along with that? Oh, you're moving to GCP, great. The business says we're moving to GCP <laughs> and the IT guys are sitting there going, well, no one told me, well, sorry. So it's all about agility. It's all about that and, and, the, and, and complexity is the killer to agility. This is all about business agility. They're going to come to you and say, "We just acquired a company. We need to integrate them." Oh, but they got oh, they use the same uh, IP address range as we do. There's overlapping IPs, uh, and oh, by the way, they're in a different cloud. How do I do that? No one cares. The business doesn't care. They're like me. They're very impatient. Get it done. But we'll find someone who will. Yeah. So you got to get ahead of that. And so when we, in terms of when we talk to customers. That's what we do. This isn't just about defenses. This is about making you get promoted, making you do good for your company such that you can respond to that and maybe even enable the company to go do that. Like we're going to enable people to do true multi-cloud applications because the infrastructure has to come first, right? You, you put the foundation in your big skyscraper like the Prue behind me and the plumbing before you start building the floors, right? So. Right. Infrastructure comes first, then comes then comes the applications. Yeah, so you know, so again, some people call it super cloud like us, multi-cloud 2.0. But I, the the real mega trend that I see, Steve, and I'd love you to bottom line this and bring us home is, you know, in recent, all companies are software companies. It's like version 2.0 of that. And the applications that are going to be built on that tie, this tie into the digital transformation. It was Goldman, it's JPMC, it's Walmart, it's Capital One, B of A. Oracle's acquisition of Cerner is going to be really interesting to see these super clouds form within industries, bringing their data, their tooling, and their mm -hmm. specific software expertise built on top of that hyperscale infrastructure and infrastructure for companies like yours. So bottom line is, Steve, Steve what's the future of cloud? How do you see it? The future is N plus one. So two years ago, people had one plus one. I had what I had on-prem and then what I had in AWS. They, today, if you talk to an enterprise, they'll have what they call four plus one, right? Which is four public clouds plus what I have on-prem. It's going to N plus one, right? And what's going to happen is exactly what you said. You're going to have industry clouds. You're going to, the, the, the multi-cloud aspect of it is going to N. It's not going to go from four to one. Some people think, oh, it's not going to be four. It's going down to one or two, BS. 
it's going to end. It's going to a lot. As they start extending to the edge and they start integrating out to the to the branch offices, it's not going to be about that branch office or that edge IoT or edge computing or data centers or campus connecting into the cloud. It's going to be the other way around. The cloud is going to extend to those areas. And you're going to have AI clouds, you know, whether it's you know, Ulta Beauty, who's a customer of ours, who's starting to roll out AR and VR out to their retail stores to show, you know, makeup and this, that, and the other thing. These are new applications. Transformations are always driven by new applications that don't exist. This isn't about lift and shift of the existing applications. The 10X TAM in this market is going to be, becomes all the new things. That's where the explosion is going to happen. And you're going to see end level. Those, those branch offices are going to look like clouds and they're going to need to be stitched together and treated like one infrastructure. So it's going to go from four plus one to N plus one. And that's what you're going to want as an enterprise. Mm. I'm going to want N clouds. So we're going to see an explosion, Dave. It's not going to be four, it's going to be N. Now at the end, underneath all of that, we'll be leveraging and effectively commoditizing the existing CSPs. Yeah. And, but you're going to have an explosion of people commoditizing them. It, it's and, and just like the Goldman's and the industry clouds are going to do, they're going to build their own IaaS. No way. Right? No way. No yeah. way. It's, so it's, that's what's going to happen. It, it's going to be a 10 X on what we saw last decade with SaaS. It's, yep. it's all going to happen yep. around clouds and super clouds. Steve Mullaney, thanks so much for coming back in the cube and helping us sort of formulate this thinking. I mean, it really started yeah. With, 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 with you and myself and John and, and Nick and really trying to think this through and watching this unfold before our yeah. eyes. So great to have you back, thank you. Yeah, it's fun, thanks for having me. All right, you're welcome. And keep it right there for more action from SuperCloud 22. Be right back. <laughs>